record. Welcome everyone to the International Day of Peace Education Peace Team March meeting. Uh, we've been away for a few months, but it's, we're re we are returning with a great program highlighting some of the great works. We have extraordinary peace builders joining us today. So we're so excited uh, to have you with us. And I'm going to turn this over to my dear friend, Jennifer Kim, to begin the meeting. So Jennifer, I'm moving this over to you. When it, it's not moving over? Well, she's unmuted, but her sound is not coming through. All right. All right, so then I'll, I'll, I'll come back. And Jennifer, when you're ready, Jennifer, please um, let us know through the chat. Is Monica's now with us either? In the participants, Monica Willard? No. All right, so the season for nonviolence, the education peace team, we are excited to and Libby Trotman to join us. Uh, we're looking forward to um, Jennifer Kim, David Wick, Sue Tisikio, students from uh, Modern Day Prep will be also be joining us, as well as, um, again, David, as Wick, as well as uh, Patricia uh, Sempo, Sempowich from the uh, Oregon uh, leadership team on peace. And of course, Jules and Carls will be joining us with the World Peace Youth. So we have a, a full lineup. Um, is Jennifer ready to, is her audio ready to come back on? Jen, are you with us? All right, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I have to try without my headset. So here we go. We're going to try some peace breathing just as a start to our meeting. We just inhale, whirl, exhale, pee. Inhale, whirl, exhale, pee. Inhale, whirl, exhale, pee. I'll turn it back to George. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. I am excited to bring um, Lenny and Len and Libby Traubman uh, to the, our platform, to this wonderful uh, subcommittee of peace. Uh, Lenny and Libby, we met a few years back at the International uh, Conference at Monmouth University under the direction of our dear friend, Dr. Saliba Sassar, a wonderful peace builder regarding uh, peace in the Middle East. Lenny and Libby, over three days of meeting, uh, taught us so much uh, regarding dialogue, regarding um, listening and embracing each other as human beings. Um, much of what they have done for me has stayed with me. So when we were, Jennifer and I were talking about the March meeting, uh, Lenny and, and Libby were always right there with me. I said, we need to bring this dynamic uh, couple to our table so they, we can embrace some of the powerful things they're, sh they're sharing with the world. So Lenny and Libby, thank you for joining us. The only thing I'm gonna say is Jules, I do have some of the information on my computer. Would I be able to access it uh, during this workshop, during this meeting? Absolutely, at the bottom of your screen, just share the screen. Very good, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Hi everybody. Are we, are we ready to start? Absolutely. It's so nice to meet you all and to see you again, George, after all these years. Wonderful so, to see you again. Yeah, Len and I are sitting here in San Mateo, California, in his little computer room in the garage. And so we're really happy to connect with each one of you. Uh, as George said, we've been involved in what we would call dialogue, compassionate listening, starting with our Jewish-Palestinian living room dialogue. We're in our 24th year now. So we thought it would be helpful uh, to sort of just take you on a little visual journey of our dialogue activity and then uh, leading to a time when you might 
want to ask some questions and clarify what it is we do and how we do it. Could we have an introduction? All right, George. Yes, Lynn. It would be best. We, uh, we have some things we can share on the screen. Oh, and good then. Fine. So if you could clear the share screen, that would be terrific. Mm -hmm. Very good. Would it be possible for each person in one breath just to say who you are and what you do in this context? Bridge build. There, thank you. So uh, we wonder if it would be possible, so we know who the other human beings are in the room here, so we can speak uh, appropriately to your interests. Um, if you could, in one breath, just say who you are and what you do in the context of this citizen-driven uh, relationship-building life. Is that possible or not appropriate? What I'm going to have to do, Lynn, is unmute each person individually because of background noise. So I sure. will. I will start with Caitlin, and then I'll. I'll after Caitlin is done, then I will unmute each person individually. It will just give us a, a much cleaner sound. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, my name is Caitlin Greno, and I'm a student leader for the Global Leadership Club that we have at Modern Day Prep in New Jersey. Thank you, Caitlin. Great. Thank you. Hi, Jermaine. Hello, I'm also, my name is Jermaine Madonza, and I'm also a student leader at Modern Day Prep. Great. Hi, Kelsey. Can't hear you, Kelsey. No audio, Kelsey. Okay, Kelsey, we're going to come back to you and then just take, just unplug yourself when we do. Hi, Constance. Hello, okay. uh, my name is Constance Marion. I'm also a student at Modern Day Prep and I'm a student leader. So. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi. I am a junior at Modern Day High School, and I'm a part of the Global Leadership Club, and I've attended the Youth Forum Conference. We love working with youth. It's great. Hi, Annabelle. Hi. Uh, I'm Annabelle Winchell, and I'm also a senior at Modern Day Prep, and I'm a part of the Global Leadership Club, and I also attended the 2016 Youth Forum with Jacqueline. Those are the youth. Great. Hi, Jane. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm not youth. <laughs> and um, I'm a philosopher. I write about intuitive thinking, which is um, a holistic way of thinking with your mind, your heart, and your soul to make moral choices. And um, I'm also an educator so I'm interested in helping to promote things like dignity and courage which is what we need for peace oh, thank you. hi Kelsey are you ready I'm sorry can you go to one of your friends computers Oh my gosh, look at Len. <laughs> this is not new. That is very it happens good. a lot. It does. Go ahead, just keep introducing. Hi, David. Hello there, great to see you all. And uh, uh, David Wick, I'm in Ashland, Oregon, but I've been with Pathways to Peace from the 1981, the beginning of the International Day of Peace. And here in Ashland, Oregon, we just started the Ashland Culture of Peace Commission, um, more about that, but also Carol Huzinski is working with us on Compassionate Listening here. Some of you probably know. Yeah. Carol's wonderful. Hi, Carlos. 
Yeah, my name is Carlos Palma. I'm speaking from Rome, from Italy. Uh, I'm coordinator for Living Peace Project and, and with Jules, I'm coordinator of the World Peace Youth, we will speak today about. Buongiorno. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Can you just, can you tell Libby, Len, and the rest of us a little bit about yourself and your project? Um, right now I'm learning more about it. I just was involved in uh, disaster recovery and um, I'm a friend of George's <clears throat> and I've been involved um, in promoting peace in my community, but now more or less being able to focus on that um, and being a, a resource, if I possibly can, to some, some of the things that are going on in the world. Thank you. And my name is Jules Lamore. I'm the director of Peace Pals International and co-founder and coordinator with Carlos Palma for our new project, which is World Peace Youth, which has created a platform for youth around the world to speak live together about important topics in the world and how to create peace. And Carlos and I will talk about that later more. Thank you, and I'm going to mute myself and unmute George. Very good. So I'm going to turn this wonderful meeting over to Lenny and Libby Trubman for the next, I would say, 12 and a half minutes. Lenny and Libby, I hate to put time constraints, but we have other speakers, but you are our wonderful uh, host today, too, regarding peace and the great work you've done. Please enlighten us uh, with the wonderful things you've been doing. So Lenny and Libby, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. We are aware that there are people on the phone that can't see this. So Yeah. Okay, grazie, zdrasviti, uh, privet, hola, buongiorno, and to the planet. Uh, we thought it would be helpful, as this is very exciting, especially since there are young people, which is where we have ended up investing most of our time, and also fabulous mentors uh, who are helping you all hold on to your idealism, which is really what we find works in everyday life. Anyway, so we thought one way to start would be just to gather a few visuals for you. So you can see with your eyes kind of how we, our own life as just everyday garden variety citizens begin and what we're doing now. And then a whatever we talk about after that today or in our sustained friendship uh, can build on that. So would that be helpful just to see something with your ojos, with your eyes? Mm -hmm. Okay, let us try to share the screen. One moment. Whoops, no, we do not want that. Can you see the screen? Yes. Can you see the planet? Okay, do you see the earth? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're together. Um, Basically, everything we have done has been from the early insights in our life, and especially in our marriage. We were married just before the photo of Earth came back from the space projects. The understanding that all is one. And people around the Earth are beginning to understand that and appreciate it. So that is the motivation for what we do, that we're all interconnected, and every day, every decision needs to be made as if all is one. And we began uh, this particular global life in the early 1980s. We're bringing Soviets and Americans together. And by 1988, uh, we had co-written for the first time in history, Soviets and Americans, Enemies, a book in common, published in common, released in both countries, in Russian and in English. Breakthrough, emerging new thinking. And as citizens, 
a handful of citizens. We brought citizen leaders together to do that in cooperation. Uh, after that, in 1989, uh, there was a group that we helped form in the early 80s called Beyond War, and we would give a Beyond War award. And then in the year 1989, two groups got that. In, the, in Israel, Palestine, a village where Arabs and Jews live together called Neve Shalom, Wahad Salam. In South Africa, there were citizens in a group called Koinonia where blacks and whites met together and shared meals together. And that inspired us. And so um, also at the same time, uh, citizens uh, in Israel and Palestine were asking us to bring them together. And that was the beginning of what was called the public peace process officially, where we learned that treaties cannot really succeed without changing human relationships. And so we helped that team uh, come together. We also time, we tested these things where we live. We brought black and white couples together to share meals and share their stories with the experience that an enemy is one whose story we have not heard. And at that same time in 1992, we began in the living rooms of, of each one another's living rooms, we would do that same thing of Jews and Palestinians who were Muslims and Christians as well. Uh, by 1997, we had done enough outreach to risk having a huge historic dinner for 420 Palestinians and Jews here in a hotel setting, and it was a fabulous success. And it really startled people, and you can see the sign over the freeway, uh, which was rather uh, unheard of in those times. The news start, the reporters starting discovering the dialogue. We never really sought media. It kind of found the dialogue partly because we had a, a very primitive website which is still available to you. So the press started finding the dialogue, and then we started creating symbols and, and curricula and graphics that would help people um, um, get an intellectual framework for how this life of sitting down together and listening to one another uh, worked. Then television news around the year 2000 started finding the dialogue. You see CNN, MSNBC, uh, ABC, CBS. Uh, they started coming to the dialogue looking for what was truly new, the new uh, hard news. For five years, beginning in 2003, we had a Palestinian um, Jewish family peacemakers camp where we brought hundreds and hundreds of women, men, and youth from 50 different towns in Israel and Palestine to live together at a resident camp near Yosemite Park and find out that they really did quite well together once they were in a safe place with a little bit of help. And uh, you high school students, uh, we just had one after another uh, dozens and dozens of great experiences in high schools. And I don't, George, that's where you've been uh, working a lot and the 10th grade class we happened to film it and they were sensational and the young people have been surprising us with their capacity to interest and courage to sit down together and listen uh, we started to make films documentary films uh, Ellie Wiesel once said that um, people become the stories they hear and the stories they tell and so we started telling the story of these human successes uh, yes, and those films are available. We gift them to people, bridge builders uh, all around the world. Uh, we moved, we were invited then to go into campuses and learned how to uh, create intimacy in, in the largest groups, a whole lot of gymnasiums full of uh, university and high school students, and to give them the experience of engaging in a mosque where uh, Muslim youth here where we live wanted to learn communication skills. And in Fresno, California, there are towns that are 
come into conflict and they're eager for new communication skills. So you can see that our interest has been in people and real on the ground, in the streets uh, engagement. Like we're doing today, we um, started to discover that facilitation could be done by Skype and by Zoom uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, up here you can see a whole auditorium full of people in Singapore uh, engaging face to face and then uh, communicating back with us on a large screen in their auditorium. And here's Korean Japanese reconciliation, mm -hmm. still uh, needed. <laughs> um, and this is broadcast from Seoul, Korea. Uh, eventually, Libby, why don't you describe that? Well, uh, because the films were have been seen and are available, a young man in Nigeria uh, saw one of the films about our peacemakers camp, and he contacted us and said, would you please come to Nigeria and help with our Christian Muslim conflict situation? So in 2010, uh, after negotiating with ourselves about whether to go or not, uh, we decided that yes, absolutely we should. And we had a fabulous experience working with this uh, large group of Christians and Mush Christian Muslim uh, Nigerians. So we brought together several hundred Muslims and Christians there and th made a film, and then that film was replicated in other African countries. You can see our colleague Ofu bringing tr uh, deeply divided uh, with past mm -hmm. massive deaths of uh, tribes in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, then they begin also in Cote d'Ivoire to dignify albinos, uh, people with albinism, because they have been so terribly treated throughout Africa. And that also was very successful. Hmm. In DR Congo, they started to dignify by everything's face to face, as you can see. Bring people with handicaps and people without handicaps. They are also excluded largely in their culture. And even married couples, imagine that. Uh, <laughs> which is where we've learned most of what we know, actually. But yes, married couples there in um, Kinshasa, the Congo. Uh, the last picture we'll show you is just uh, one of the things we do is, well, this is just from the recent, um, uh, you know, the, um, religious. Uh, 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 what's it? The In Salt Lake me, City, where it was the big uh, somebody conference help us. of um, religions. The Parliament. Parliament of World Religions. So, so 10,000 people from different faith traditions from around the planet came together. And we often have had booths all over the country at different conferences. And it is a way to engage people and give away how-to materials and uh, move this around the planet. Uh, if you want to know more, you can. Google is very friendly to the dialogue. You can just Google Jewish Palestinian living room dialogue. There's a Wikipedia page now. And that's our story. And I hope it was seven minutes. We did our best. <laughs> uh, am I, Jules, can I speak? All right. Is that helpful? Lenny, yes, you, you basically uh, helped us to embrace your humanity on a global level. Uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, you follow me through my life. And we are so indebted to such the amazing things that you're doing, bringing people together. I, again, I experienced that three years ago at the international conference where Arabs and Israelis, Palestinians uh, came together and embrace each other's humanity. And you quoted Dr. Weisel, and Dr. Weisel taught us very, a long time ago. He said, one time, people asked me what I do, and he looked at them, he said, I'm, I'm a collector of tears. I, I go around the world collecting stories. And through our suffering, through our humanity is when we find our true essence and our true understanding. And so we'd be interested to know what touched you, what had meaning for you, In, in this, in this three minutes.
I would love to anyone who has any questions about how Lenny and Libby embrace humanity and, and bring the essence of compassionate listening as well as compassionate humanitarianism to each other. Does anybody, would anybody like to ask questions? From Jennifer to everyone, I have a question. Raise your hand and I will unmute you. Hello, Lenny and Libby, it's Jennifer. Um, Wow, spectacular to hear more from you directly about what you're doing. I love the face-to-face. -face. Um, that is where it's at, I think. So I think um, this, to me, is something that is needed in so many corners of the world, including this corner here in Chicago. Um, so I guess my first question is, when people are interested in you know, working with you or moving this forward in their own community, um, what's involved as far as cost goes, and what, what's involved with getting this going somewhere. So could, could we hear from a couple of other people too, and then maybe we could take two minutes to answer your questions or- so how they get started and if there's a cost. How to start. Uh, who else? Hit, hit the, um, the, the hand, is there a hand? Hey, Caitlin. Hey, Caitlin, hi. I thought what you said was really inspiring, and I was just wondering, when you first got out started, you said you were inspired by the planet and the photograph of it. I was wondering what else you did to start your project and what else really inspired you, and if there's any way to better get your ideas out there. What inspired us? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. <laughs> Constance? Hello. Um, I was just wondering. Oh, am I feeding back? Good. Good. Speak. Okay. I was just wondering um, about all of the people that you brought together. Uh, are there any people that you spoke to personally that really stuck out in your mind and for any reason? Yeah, specific stories that stayed with you. Stories? Yeah. It stuck, what stuck out in our minds. Uh, anyone else? Yes, David has a question. And uh, um, I'm, one of the things that we're working with here with the uh, Ashland Culture and Peace Commission is um, having peace ambassadors, which we are talking about, being a presence on in the community and on the streets uh, to assist with some of the uh, some of the tensions that have developed here with people traveling through homeless people, etc. Um, and what you showed with your graphics are fundamental um, information about communications and relationship. And I just would love to see where those resources are because those are are timeless. Um, what you have there. Thank you. Okay. Resources. Okay. Yeah. Should we, re can, do we have like two minutes to respond? Please do. Please do. Okay. Why don't. Your time is precious. We know. So, uh, Go ahead. starting with the base with Jennifer's question about how to start, uh, people do contact us a lot and ask for and say they want to do what the same kind of activity where they live. And David asked the question about resources, and we do have lots and lots of available resources that step-by-step step outline how to start a group, how to lead a camp, how to facilitate. We have very, very simple, direct instructions that are very helpful. And they're all made available. You can download them from our website. We are also happy to mail anything to anybody if that's more useful in that doing it that way. And in terms of cost, we try to make everything very cost effective. We don't want people to feel they can't do this because they don't have money. It's people intensive, not money intensive. Mm -hmm. We do appreciate every now and then we get a, a donation that surprises us and we do need the money to reproduce our materials and the DVDs and to mail things. We don't want money to stop getting the information out there. So we try to be very economical in how we do it. And if we are invited to come to a college campus, usually we get some kind of an honorarium that helps pay our expenses. So the, I would say that's the answer to that. 
you asked what inspired us, and the first thing that inspired us that when we were given tools, because we had great mentors, and we're able to sit down in the context of our own relationship and be heard and be listened to, uh, that was a beautiful thing for our children and for us. Um, but also, every time we see people sit down uh, and, and realize that this works, when you sit people down and you start with listening, listening is the great act of love, and it is the entry point. And once somebody is heard, I'm sure you've been heard and have wept from being heard, uh, that is what the beginning, the person with the power, the will, and the skill to listen is the one who can begin to transform the relationship. So every time we see that happen, we're re-inspired. Um, how to start, start small. Don't start big, just start small and time test whatever you're gonna do and see if it really works with people. And usually you can do that without money. And so that's a wonderful place to start. And basically we will always be here for you. We'll be at the other end of Skype or Zoom or the phone or email. So if any of you want uh, encouragement, tips, we're definitely, our ears are open. I think yeah, you Is also asked, did anybody, uh, do any stories stand out for us that keep us inspired? And I would say over the many years that we've been doing this, that we've had many fantastic, surprising, moving stories. And um, a, a couple of them would, I would just say have to do more recently, like the young man in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Ofu, who, James Ofu, who single-handedly has done the most amazing work using the simple tools of dialogue because he picked it up, he saw that he could do it, he saw it was something that he could uh, really use to change the, the uh and he is quite primitive warring tribes together and he did that over now a year ago and he said they're still celebrating so that's one story about taking the material and making it come alive that's it we see your uh, we see your notes down here your questions email uh, we'll answer those if you can just keep this Zoom window open at the end so that we can not lose that chat box. Very good. Okay. Jules, am I up? Okay. Can you hear me? Am I, am I being heard across? Very good. <laughs> Jules. <laughs> Jules, you're you're muted. So if you're saying something, we don't hear. No, I, I am. Yeah, I I I tend to do that. I was just telling George I could hear him. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Jules. Thank you, Len. Thank you, Libby. L Lenny and Libby, thank you again for your beautiful, passionate humanity, and uh, I'm sure you are leaving such a impression, especially on my young people here. <laughs> I'm watching their faces. I wish I could take selfies with them. You can see. Uh, <laughs> how, how in, in amid they are with your words and your passion and your humanitarian your humanism. So yes, you, you continue to inspire us. So thank you for that. And you will continue to inspire us from this day on. Believe me, um, I am part of that, that uh, passion that you, you speak about. I'm going to move it over to uh, briefly what's going on here. At some of the students talked about the Global Leaders Club and some of the work we're doing here in New York, uh, in New, New Jersey. One of the things I'm involved in right now is, with Jennifer, is the International Day of Peace. But in between the International Day of Peace, we have another conference that's always been close, important to us, it's called the Season for Nonviolence. And this is a conference that we've been doing for years with Monica Willard and Deborah Maldow. And um, it's just something very important to me, as well as my colleague, Lindy Cressatelli, to continue this conference because what this conference does have to have a stage, have to have a platform where other young people can come and see you, hear you, listen to you, and understand what your vision of peace looks like.
when how can I do, uh, share the screen? If I, I'm going to do share screen, give you a quick synopsis and just have you hear some of my student voices here. Yeah, so I'm going to go share screen, come into this. And I'm going to see if, if this works. And this is some of the work we do here in New York. One of the things we call stand up and lead, which is a whole community approach. It's a whole school approach, which becomes a whole community approach. And what, we, what I believe in, what I work with my colleague, Lindy, and, and uh, other people in the field is put the skills, the skills into the hands and into the minds of our students. That's the key. You can't just show them how, you, you just can't talk about it. You have to say, here are the skills. Now go to work. And I know what Lenny and Libby, what you do is you say, here is the work, here are the skills. How can I support you now as you go forward? Uh, this is the key. Give them the opportunity to go into their schools, go into the communities, and create that change. And that is key. Last season from our moms, we had Dr. Reverend uh, C.T. Vivian, who spoke to the young people, because we want to connect the voices of the past to the voices of the present. And they need to hear who has carried the weight of history up until this point, and now it's out our role, not myself, but your role, the young leaders, to carry that weight forward, uh, to sort of create that solution, to find that solution. This is a conference where we work with over 400 girls in, in leadership and empowerment. Uh, as young as, as fourth grade, it starts young, and you have to sort of carry them through their communities as they carry them. This was the last season for nonviolence, and we're preparing now for the next season for nonviolence conference, which is in two weeks, March 15th. Again, these are powerful young leaders moving forward. And this is Deborah, our dear friend Deborah, who led us to what we call the flag ceremony. Nonviolence is a global issue, solutions is a global issue, but we are, all need to be part of that, that, that solution. Jennifer is our dear friend Jennifer Kim, who will also be flying in from Chicago for March 15th to share the International Day of Peace message with over 400 students uh, who will be there sharing their best practices regarding nonviolence in their lives, nonviolent leadership in their lives as well. This is the International Day of Peace Conference that just uh, passed. My students who were at this table attended that conference, and we used this conference as a springboard to move forward. Of course, I had to sneak a picture of my daughter who attended the conference with me. She's going to kill me for this, but uh, it's important I do that. This is my colleague, Linda Crisitelli, who works with me in reaching out to school communities and giving the tools to others. Again, my students at the United Nations. And these meetings, these conferences are so important because they'll explain to you why it's that important. I'll leave it to them. Again, uh, being a part of that energy. Again, being a part of the dialogue uh, because they have to understand that they will play a role. And again, International Day of Peace, Peace Day. Uh, teaching also adults as well as students how to sort of so deal with difficult individuals without becoming difficult yourself. This is something we truly believe in. Again, being a part of the UN solution, the, the equation. Uh, again, and for Kate, when she spoke powerfully uh, to the world, which was webcast, she felt that this conference, which was in global warming, it, Google was in the conversation, and, and Kate said, Google problem is the world problem. Uh, so we all need to sort of be a part of that. So we're very proud of Kate to sort of humanize uh, the, con the conference and bring it back to the, the issues in the world. And this is our conference that is coming up March 15th. It is going to be an exciting educational event. Students are educators and community leaders. And we are gracious to them. We, are, we do appreciate their, um, their, their we, are, we do have great gratitude towards the UFT for hosting this amazing event. Our keynote speaker will, will be Minnie Jean Brown Tricky. She will be our keynote from the Little Rock Nine. But I tell you right now, I'm looking at some of the student programs, student, uh, some student uh, presentations. They will leave you in awe. And that is what I want my students to see. The forces of the past, but so more important that our students will play a role in being part of the solutions of the future. Today, beginning today. They are the present leaders today. So this will be something we're looking forward to. Student uh, for Nonviolence UFT. And I'm gonna just turn this over to my students and they will briefly share with you why that young voice is so necessary to be needed to be heard. So I'm going to turn this over to Jules. I'm going to turn this back to you, and then I'll turn this to any one of my students here who would like to sort of speak. 
You need to unshare your screen. There you go. So, right. tell me who you would like to start with. Kate, would you like to begin? Okay, so we'll start with Kate and we'll work it around to Connie. Hi. Hi. I, I just would like to say, say that I think communication is such a big part and we have the technology it's just a matter of using it and people are going to the communication conferences has really opened me up to the struggles that other people around the world have and may i i may not be able to experience it firsthand but it gives me a better understanding of what they go through and that enables us to see what the problem is and what we can do. And going forth and inviting us youth into the conferences gives us the chance to see the problems and say, wow, these kids in other countries are going through this and I have the opportunity to help them. That really just gives me, it makes me so grateful that I'm able to attend these. Thank you. Anybody else? Come here now. Jermaine? All right, we'll go to Jermaine. Thank you, kid. Hello. Um, everyone hear me? Um, my name is Jermaine, and I'm a youth member for the uh, Society for the Prevention of Teen Suicide. And it's an organization that works around New Jersey to raise awareness of teen suicide. And teen suicide is a very important subject. It's, uh, it's hard to talk about, but as the youth, this is a uh, kid our age, younger than us, that are killing themselves. Bring awareness and do something so that the youth know that they're not alone, that there's help for them. And for youth, all of them, the, the catalyst that helps that person to not end their life. That's what I'm really passionate about, what I'm working towards, I'm hoping that our teachers are not having awareness to suicide. Thank you. Good. Connie? Hello. Can you all hear me? Any feedback? <laughs> Just go with it. Just All go right. Um, I attended the International Day of Peace Conference at the UN earlier this year. And uh, I really liked that everyone in attendance was very willing to open conversations that people usually avoid because, because they're uncomfortable or because they're tough issues. Um, but, but it's because of these tough issues that they really need to be resolved. And it was nice to be included in the discussion about the issues that will become my generation's responsibility, even though they might have been difficult to talk about. Thank you, Tony. Turn this over to my dear friend, co-chair Jennifer Kim and Jennifer, Thank you for joining us, and it's all yours. Thank you, George. Um, I just wanted to briefly, well, first of all, Len and Libby, I think um, I want to say to all of us here that, you know, we have this gathering of people live right now, but this will be going out to our group, which is, you know, close to 200 people on our list, and I'll be getting this recording of today's meeting, and I think your resources are going to spread like crazy. I think so many people will be interested in, in seeing what you're doing. So thank you again, and they'll love hearing from all the students as well, and hopefully those in the New York area will get in touch with George um, you know, because that season for nonviolence coming up soon um, will be something to get involved in. So just really briefly, um, many of you know that here in Chicago, we started an official peace day back in 1978 before the UN created the International Day of Peace. And one of the new projects our organization, the Peace School, started this, this year at the new year was a daily call to peace. So. Um, with Peace Day, we have for many years done the World Peace Flag Ceremony, which many of you are um, familiar with, where peace is sent to every country of the world. And we started doing a daily call to peace on Facebook. So I'm going to try to share a screen. I didn't do myself right here. Never mind. I'm not going to try to share the screen. 
Um, I didn't have time to set up properly, but um, I will send out via email a link. Every day we have an image uh, from the World Peace Flag Ceremony of the flag being presented for that country of the day. We have an image of a map where you see the country itself and its place in the world and their flag. And every day has that message of peace, sending peace and love to all humanity peace in that country of the day. So it's a very simple, beautiful way you can start your day. Just click each day and you can send that wish, thought, or prayer for peace to one country of the world. So I invite everyone to join in on that. And um, on that note, I think um, Anne Louise Colgan, did she make it today, Jules? Anne Louise? No. So, Sue DeChico, is she still on the phone? Sue, is Sue still on the telephone? I don't know her number. Uh, is there someone on the telephone with us? We have two on the telephone. Can you hear me? Sue? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Hi, Sue? can you hear me? Which one is Sue? This, that's me. Okay. Welcome. We can hear you. Thanks. You can hear me now, Jules. Go ahead, Sue. Okay, thanks. Hi, everybody. Uh, you're all up to some uh, amazing things, and it's been a lot of fun to listen. So I, uh, I run the Peace Crane Project. You can check us out at peacecraneproject.org. We invite every child in the world to fold an origami crane, write a message of peace on its wings, and trade it with another child somewhere in the world. Uh, through us. We have a couple of other ideas we might be adding this year, but to be honest, I've been so overwhelmed with uh, signups this year that I think uh, we may just have our hands uh, just keeping up with the people who want to. It's that uh, ways if you're, you can certainly um, send me an email. You can reach me through the website at peacecraneproject.org. Uh, it's a great project for classrooms, or if you want to volunteer in the community, you can go out and, and recruit uh, schools to, to join us. So that, that's about it. It's going to be a huge year, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with all of you to make it the, the biggest uh, Peace Day ever. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. That's Peace CraneProject.org, everybody. Um, check them out. Unbelievable what they're up to. Please take a good look. Um, Jules, now it's your turn with Carlos to talk about your very exciting new project for youth. It's all yours. Carlos, you are, I can't hear you, Carlos. You're not muted. I can't hear you, Carlos. We know it worked earlier. What about if you just unplug Carlos and just talk directly for now? So Carlos is having some audio difficulty, which he and I will practice with. So Carlos and I, Carlos. Hello. Yes. There you no? are. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I will start to explain, but you will complete, Jules. Okay. Perfect. So uh, we are very, very happy that we have a lot of youth today with us because um, our project uh, is in this direction, just to, to, make, to give the possibility to the youth to meet together in a platform that we call the World Peace Youth. What will be, what, what is, is the times during the year, four, four times, the 13th of April, in June, 
we will meet 500 youth from all around the world, from all continents, all religions and cultures, just to share together our commitment to peace. So what will happen is very simple. Uh, next, the first time will be concentrate on the Fuji Declaration. So the 15 students, they will speak and they will choose one of the points to discuss and they will share how they, they put in practice, how they, they, they apply this point in their life. And they will present project of peace that they are doing in their countries. And the other 485 youth, at the end, they will have the chance to make a dialogue and to ask questions. So we want that to make like uh, the, human, the human being, the, all the family, one fam all the youth, one family together, speaking together, sharing together, and encouraged together to live for peace. No, Jules? Jules. That's exactly right. You know what, both Carlos and I have experienced at conferences, and for me personally, and I know Carlos agrees, Youth aren't always heard. And, you know, Len and Libby spoke about this. The most important thing for our youth is to be heard and to give them the opportunity to have this voice really without adult moderation. So this is, you know, this is a project that Carlos and I are managing as, as collaborators, as founders together, is to create this platform as a webinar for the youth to come together. And grown-ups are also invited to come and listen in. So we welcome you, you, you adults. Because it's important, I think, not only for youth to hear each other, but for us as adults to learn from the youth and to let them know that their voices are being heard, that they're not, again, they're not just our future, they are our present. And we really, we want to encourage them. There are, yeah. they are, so that's what we're working on. We'll be sending out a, a hard launch date next week. And we have four times a year set up, but we will be opening it up to other youth organizations if they need the platform, you know, to speak, to have a webinar much different than where we're at with Zoom, there'll be an audience and there'll be presenters. Exactly. So we're very excited. Thank you. Yeah, and the youth, they are, the youth are very excited. They are already writing to say they are waiting for the 13th of April just uh, to be together. So we have uh, 15, no, 14 uh, youth who will speak from Morocco, from India, from Pakistan, from Argentina, Brazil, from Peru, from Syria, uh, Philippines. So you can imagine the <laughs> international point of view of peace all together. So very, it will be a very nice moment, I think. So take a look at the website, really easy, worldpeaceyouth.org. And it's Jules at worldpeaceyouth.org and Carlos at worldpeaceyouth.org. So you can reach Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Jules. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> My partner. Okay. I'm going to unmute Jennifer and George. Thank you. And I'm going to mute myself and Carlos. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer, can you introduce, please, David to the, the group and some of the great things that are going on in, in Oregon? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, David Wick has been involved with uh, Peace Work for his life, really, I think. Um, and I think it's so exciting what's happening in Ashland, Oregon right now. So, you know, we don't have a ton of time, but David, we did want to give you a chance to tell a little bit more about the Peace Commission, because this really is something that cities across the country and around the world can really model after. So, David, it's your floor. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you very much. And it's just truly a delight to be with you all and to see you, you know, with, with Skype and hello to those on the phone. And um, as you mentioned, I've been involved with, you know, um, peace building and, and particularly Pathways to Peace, which is really one of the motherships of 
of peace building in, <clears throat> in uh, the world here. Um, and since you know, uh, 1981 was the beginning of the um, International Day of Peace, and uh, here in, I, I moved here in Ashland. I've been in the Bay Area all my life, <clears throat> and then moved to Ashland in 2003. And here we've had a number of wonderful International Day of Peace events on, on September 21st, uh, and <clears throat> which is wonderful. But I've also been involved with, with the UN and, and Pathways with a focus on the culture of peace and the culture of peace initiative and what is a culture of peace um, and how in the U UN <clears throat> in 1999 uh, had a resolution, a program of action for the culture of peace, which really outlined <clears throat> excuse me, a number of areas that are very important as we find our way from the culture of war and violence that we live within uh, currently in various ways in, uh, in the world and locally, um, and how we move to a culture of peace. But what is that really? And what we uh, dedicated in 19, uh, I mean in 2013 here in Ashland was to create a culture of peace commission, which is um, engaged with the city um, is blessed by the city council and the mayor. We did a lot of education, a lot of uh, co-learning together, but to really create an entity that on an ongoing basis, daily basis, can really look at what are the current issues that we're dealing with um, and how do we deal with them in a much more conscious way um, and planting the seeds for the future. And, you know, for the, you know, as we talk about the youth, they're, you know, how do we plant the seeds that they can move forward with a uh, uh, culture of peace? And so we um, selected um, representatives of the city. We have the, um, from the P Pathways to Peace Peace Wheel, which has eight different sectors of society. And we use that as an organizing principle. Um, and we have wonderful people set forward, such as our <clears throat> uh, city council liaison, um, the chief of police, our editor of the, our local newspaper, head of the library, uh, artists, musicians, and others. So we have those different perspectives, um, and we come together, and we're working on a number of, of projects, one of which is a peace ambassador program to have a positive presence on the streets. And part of that is we're using, um, we're just going through the training of compassionate listening with locally with Carol Wazinski. Um, which I'm <clears throat> sure Len and Libby know so well. So anyhow, it's really about how do we raise the awareness of peace, peace building, and the culture of peace in a community. Because the city, to engage with a city that has the reach, the, the responsibility, um, the resources to really help you know, a broad spectrum of people come together. But the things you're talking about, the fundamentals of of conversation and sitting together around, you know, conversations, break bread together. You know, all those are, are eternal uh, fundamentals that bring us together. So we're using a variety of those two. So that's what we're up to. It's a grand experiment, um, but moving in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. We're really happy that you could join us today. Um, Thank you. And, and also, the peace education is one of the keys we're focused on. So that's where it's, that's one of the essentials also. Yes. So that's one thing that's um, with our team here. We're really big on trying to share resources as much as we can with each other. So um, I think anyone who wants to get in touch with anyone else within this group, we'd like to help facilitate that if you don't already have connection. Yes, Jules, jump in. You know, something that Carlos and I really, what we want to make a focus is really for youth organizations and youth to share their projects on our website. You know, we're in the beginning development stages, but it's so important for youth to have a place. And even for organizations that don't have the funding or the skill to have a website, you know, where they can have an area that we can share their information. So that's going to be out there. And we both encourage, you know, youth and youth organizations when we do create this portal on our website, you know, to come there and share the projects. Because peace education is the most essential 
component with our youth and our future. And that is all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jewel. If you don't mind, um, Jewel, to uh, turn uh, George back on to close us out for our meeting today. And you can mute me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to mention one of the uh, uh, people on the phone is uh, Dr. Stevie Leshin, who is involved um, in the Monmouth County, New Jersey area on interfaith dialogue. Uh, she's doing great things here. Stevie, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Stevie. Oh, <laughs> I've been a good listener. Okay, I, um, I just want you to know I've heard everything. And Len and Libby, I also met you at Saliba's conference years ago. Yes, and ho we'll hope to have Stevie on, as, on our platform in the near future, and she can share with us some of the great things she's doing here in the United States. States, also in Korea, and uh, again, uh, a great deal what Stevie does is to bring people together, many of the great inter, you know, interfaiths together for dialogue and for learning and understanding. I know uh, one of my students is a product of uh, one of her programs called the Youth Mosaic, uh, Garden State Youth Mosaic, which brings young people from many different faiths together for community service programs and uh, really being a powerful component in their communities. So Stevie, we look forward to hearing from you in the future. I like to Thank say you. Thank you. I'd like to say to all of our participants today, uh, Jules, David, uh, my wonderful students from the Global Leaders Leadership uh, Institute here, uh, Carlos, Lenny, Libby, David, uh, thank you, Sarah, thank you for joining us, Jane, thank you for joining us, of course, Jennifer. There is such powerful energy here. Um, it's always good to be in, in this community, in this circle of hope, and not just hope, but people who are basically uh, find the solutions and put the solutions to, to Okay, questions? No, you cut out. I cut out, all right. Am I back? Great. So I, I'd like to uh, end this meeting again on, as Lenny and Libby said, on the chat line. A lot of information has been put there. Please use this. This is being recorded. So we will send this out to you uh, within a few days, Jules. Jules, thank you for being a wonderful host. Thank you for being thank you. who you are, Jules. You're so extraordinary. It's, to be in this circle is, is always heartwarming and um, inspiring, to say the least. To see Lenny and Libby again via this platform, wonderful to reconnect with you again. I look forward to reconnecting again. We will let you know how the March 15th conference went. It's, we're very excited about that conference. We are taping it, so we will make that tape available for all of you. And uh, please stay in touch. Uh, as Jennifer said, we are a resource. We all uh, We all believe in each other, and uh, we know what it takes. It takes work, but it also takes a and believing, especially in the young people. That's where the answers are. They are, they are solutions in action and uh, we're there to sort of say been there done that whatever we can do we're there to support you uh, and thank you all of you again for you, your blessed humanity in reminding this planet that uh, there is hope and there is also work to do and always we're, we are a planet that is work in progress <laughs> so god bless you all and uh, hope to see you again soon Can the chat remain open for a few minutes after the official closing? Jules? Ab you know what? Absolutely. In fact, I will just stop recording. I will not end the meeting. And I will make it so whoever wants to stay and talk, I'm going to unmute everybody. Oh, just, oh boy. <laughs> I feel like this is a pretty bunch uh, screen. I have everybody on top. Uh, here's a story. <laughs> no, I will actually. I'm not going to unmute everybody because that will be. Maybe we can just mute ourselves. That would have, well. I believe you can mute and unmute yeah. yourself. I've left that option open. The chat room is open. Uh, you know, stay for an hour if you want. Stay for five hours. Have fun. <laughs> it's yours. I am going to stop recording though now. Okay. So.
Peace to all. Thank you, Jewel. Jewel. Jewel.